Yo guys, it's Kyle coming at you from Bane's Film Reviews. I just saw The Bike Riders, written and directed by Jeff Nichols, starring Jodie Comer, Austin Butler, Tom Hardy, and a slew of other people that you've probably heard of, like Michael Shannon and Norman Reedus. The list goes on and on. It's a really fantastic cast. I'm not even gonna go into the acting. Well, not too much anyway. Um, it's pretty obvious that with that caliber of actor, uh, especially those three leads, you're gonna get really good acting. What I was really intrigued by was, while there's a lot of dialogue in this film, it's the space between the dialogue that's most important. And you get you get those really stellar moments, moments because of Hardy and Butler and Comer. Not in any particular order, but they just do such a wonderful job with their facial expressions and their, and their body language and things like that. And Nichols uses that time between dialogue and between, in the middle of conversations, to... Uh, exacerbate the tone and strengthen uh, what narrative there is. I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, he does a really good job in those moments of uh, bringing out the best in those actors and the best in the film as a whole. Now, to half step back to the narrative, it's a very thin narrative. Um, I, I, it's based on a novel. It's this is this film is based on and it follows the Vandals Chicago uh, biker gang through the mid 60s and into the early 70s. And again, the narrative is relatively thin. There's not a ton of content really. It's not really a character study. The only, it's hard to describe, but the Vandals themselves, you know, that the entire gang, the idea of this gang is sort of a character within the film. And that's what Nichols focuses on. And I, I can't speak anything to the book. I, I don't know exactly how that went. But um, this that's the center of this. There's no one character that takes precedence over any of the others, even with Jodie Comer's Kathy uh, narrating the entire film and, you know, Hardy's Johnny and Butler's Benny playing really prominent roles. The most prominent role that's featured in this film is the biker gang as a collective. And other than that, there's no one direction that this is headed. There's a lot of little bits and pieces that take place from 65 to 73. And it's not super linear, bounces back and forth, which is okay. It's not really a complaint. I just don't know if there's a, a linear cohesive narrative here. It's just telling the story in any any way that uh that that they see fit really um with, with that said I, I think it's a relatively interesting film i think that this team does a good job of capturing the characters and bringing up the best in those actors and the again in those in between moments and those moments between the dialogue then you get cool lighting and then the sound with it being a, a film that focuses very heavily predominantly on a biker gang you need to have really good sound in order for this film to work and I was really impressed with that use of sound because that too isn't overwhelming it, it's like the dialogue there's a ton of sound there's you hear motorcycles pretty regularly but there's that I don't want to use the word the, the phrase dead space because it's not dead space but it's this it again is the space in between the the sound that really works in favor of this film it's what allows people to uh, dig deeper into the characters and dig deeper into what what narrative there is and really appreciate the film on, on a number of different levels. So very much like the dialogue, the sound as a whole, whether it's the score, the soundtrack, or just the sound effects of those motorcycles, that space in between is what really, uh, it's what really does it for this film and what really appealed to me. I This was a film that I didn't really plan on seeing I just saw that there were tickets available. It was very early showing, 9.55. It started in the morning, and I figured I had some time to kill, so I might as well go check it out. I'm not mad that I, I went to see it. Would I have spent $16 on it like it would have normally cost without my without my Regal card? No, I probably wouldn't. So I, I'm, I'm going to give this film a 7.5 out of 10. I think it's worth renting once it comes out. Spend, I don't know, spend 8 bucks on it or whatever it costs to rent it if you're in big into collecting go ahead it's probably a cool film to own and add to your collection don't don't come out to see this 
it's it moves pretty quickly it's not by any means a waste a waste of time the acting is stellar as you'd expect with the cast of this caliber i, I forgot to mention mike faced as i started uh started my little conversation here mike faced is in uh, the majority of this film as well he's very he has like a, a very subtle part in this film he's in a lot of it but his his role is minimal in a unique way and i don't want to give away what his role is not that it's a huge spoiler but I don't want to go into too much detail and, and give that away because it's not super relevant to uh, what makes the film appealing. Uh, again, I would give the bike riders a uh, 7.5 out of 10. Wait till it comes out at, at home and you can rent it or, or buy it there. But I don't think you need to venture out to the theaters to watch this. Um, it's not a family film by any means. Watch this with a significant other. That's fine. But... Uh, there's some sexual themes and a lot of cursing and a lot of blood and gore and uh it's a pretty violent film so just keep that in mind when you sit down to watch it at home uh with whoever you're sitting down to watch it with until next time i've been kyle peace